Hola, hola. Welcome to the Breakthrough Brand Show. I'm Fabi Paolini, and my mission on this podcast is to give you the behind-the-scenes stories, anecdotes, and unique perspectives behind building a premium brand that makes a real impact. I believe that when you create a message that is aligned with your truth, you can have the breakthroughs that changes lives. Each week, me and my guests share with you how we're making an impact with our message and the stories behind our success. So that being said, let's dive into today's episode. I am so excited today to welcome Paul Daniels and so curious to hear a little bit more about him. He is an international speaker, three-time board advisor, international best-selling author, co-chair of the 2022 Climate Tech Award in Paris. What? And he's also the founder and CEO of Peripheral Thinkers. I'm really excited to have you here, Paul. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Great to have you. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, I'm sorry that you don't have a lot of energy. So I'll <laughs> Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's my honor to be here. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Well, tell me a little bit about what you do in your own words. What I do. So uh, I help business owners mm -hmm. that have achieved good results, but are starting to see things slow down or potentially flatten out. I help them find new ways and new paths to growth and innovation and build a repository that helps them succeed in any market condition now or in the future. Oh, I like that. So I'm going to kind of dive right deep, or actually, well, you know what? No, let's have you first. I want to hear a little bit first about how you got into doing this. And then I'll dive into asking you questions about peripheral thinkers, because I'm really okay. curious about that. But let's hear a little bit of the backstory first. Um, how did you get into doing what you're doing right now? Well, we have to go back a little bit in order to kind of start that story, but I'll be brief. Born and raised in Southern California, um, have uh, lived in, I lived in 26 homes by the time I was 30. Wow. And um, and growing up, I was labeled dumb, slow, lazy, a daydreamer, an outsider. And that followed me through school and even into my professional career. And by age 39, I had advanced pretty quickly through different corporations. I'd already owned my own company, grew it, sold it. Uh, but I was still being, you know, uh, told that, gosh, we don't really get where, where you're coming from. We like the results, you know, $1.3 billion in revenue. We like that a lot, but we just don't get you. Mm -hmm. At age 40, I was diagnosed with dyslexia. Oh, okay. And that gave me a language to explain how I came up with ideas and solutions. So you may or may not know it, but throughout history, dyslexics have been there. They are the leaders in innovation. It's the way our brain is wired. And so as I continued to help companies and clients through my consulting and advisory firm, um, I formulated peripheral thinkers and peripheral thinking as a mirror image of the skills that are found innately within dyslexics, like Einstein, Henry Ford, Agatha Christie, Anne Bancroft, JFK, Richard Branson, the list goes on, right? And these people have dyslexia. We see the world a little bit differently. And the need for dyslexic thinking, if you will, mm -hmm. is never more present than it is right now, this time in history. So for the last several decades, I've been using my skills, well, more than a several decades, but you don't need to know how old I am. So a long time, uh, obviously, because it's innate. And now I'm I'm sharing with other people that are neurotypical, how do you find and use these skills to help them grow, overcome challenges, obstacles, uh, and innovate and thrive in any market condition. So that's that's the impetus. That's how it came to be. Uh, yeah, I'll stop there. I love that. And you know what I really um, love about that story you know, as a brand strategist, I'm always focused on how, what can we leverage in our own life, life or lives, in our story, in our skills, in our personality, in our way that we're doing things. How can we leverage those things to be seen as different? And it's so funny because for most of us, when we were kids, we all wanted to fit in. We all wanted to kind of be like, okay, I want everybody to see me as normal, whatever that means. Right. And now when I look at the success of businesses and clients that I work with and people like you, 
it's all about how do I leverage the things that make me different and how those become your competitive advantage. So in your case, you took something that I'm sure kind of like what you mentioned as a child, it would have been seen as something negative or you were labeled a certain way and you turn it around into something really powerful because it turns out that that thing that was negative is actually really powerful. So I really love that, that part of that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I can't change the story. It is my story, but I right. completely agree with you. You know, the conventional wisdom and industry best practices, those are often defined by the industry's leaders mm -hmm. and subject matter experts, right? And so while it's well-intentioned, it gives a baseline uh, of the way to do work. It's also without a broad set of experiences, it can be very narrow in its perspectives. So if everyone is following conventional wisdom and industry best practices, where is the differentiation? Exactly. That makes right? absolute sense. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more then about peripheral, peripheral. I have a hard time with the word because I'm probably too, nope. my, 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 my brain is too Spanish. <laughs> no, it's, it's not lost on me that I chose a very difficult word to describe this as a dyslexic because I hate the word dyslexia. I can't right. spell it <laughs> because I'm dyslexic. Okay. That's another story for another uh, podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about this peripheral thinkers and what like what's the theory behind it or i mean you kind of explain some of the theory but what's the point of view let's say it like that yeah the the reason that i i develop peripheral thinking is a, a couple fold one the the world economic forum several years ago did a study on all the skills needed in all industries around the world in order for each company in those industries to succeed mm -hmm. in the year 2022 2025 2030 and beyond and what they found is that the top skills are cognitive skills and the current working environment or the, the current working population have the fewest number of people with those skills to fill the need. So Ernst & Young and a couple of other companies made by Dyslexia, um, Cambridge University, they studied the World Economic Forum's Future Jobs Report. And they found that of those top skills in the highest demand, most of them are innately found within dyslexics, hmm. but there's not enough dyslexics. There's, you know, the, between 10 and 15% of the population is dyslexic. Now, 20 to 30% are entrepreneurs, nearly 40% of self-made millionaires are dyslexic. And wow. NASA actively recruits people with dyslexia. About 50% of NASA is dyslexic. That's amazing. That's Some amazing. have even called it uh, the, the MIT disease. <laughs> so the number of students that are at MIT. So knowing all of that, that's impetus one. I said, there's not enough people. We've cracked the code. We know what the skills are, depending on which research you look at. It's anywhere between five and six categories, 10 to 20 skills. So I took those and I translated them into neurotypical speak. Okay. You, so that you can see, oh, that's what the interpreting skill is. Oh, that's how they came up with that idea. Oh, that's how they connect the dots, even when they only when there's only three dots and there are 40 dots to make you know the connection. They see the pattern. That's how I can see patterns as well. And and it just it's like uh, so deep in me, I want to help other people see this wonderful world that I see that I find inspiration every day from the littlest things that I can apply. My desk is filled with yellow sticky notes and I have this thing called a peripheral resource library. It's loaded with tens of thousands of thoughts and ideas and concepts and lessons that I've learned around the world serving clients in 31 industries and 27 countries. And it all can be tied back together to apply to your challenges. That's amazing. So Okay, so I understand the need for peripheral thinking. How does how does this benefit? I mean, I think I, I'm, this might be obvious when I'm asking just from what you're saying, but I kind of want to hear some of the stories maybe of, of how can this benefit an entrepreneur or a leader? What are some of the things that they right. can do now because they are able to learn some of these skills? Right, okay, so I can take us on a a quick journey. Mm -hmm. um, it will require a little participation 
okay. from you and from the, the audience. We'll, we'll do it very briefly. Okay. So Im- imagine that you're standing in a mountain field covered with wildflowers. The sun is warm on your face. The air is crisp and it's cool. And as you look on the mountain field, bam, right in front of you is the biggest challenge that you face. And it's rising, you know, like a monolith out of the flowers. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you picture that in your mind? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got it. <laughs> so now, like any good explorer, what we're going to do is kind of cover our eyes. Not really. That's not what explorers do. But just take your hand and, and put it over your face. Okay, I want to do it. I want to do it. You have to practice. Right. Great. So, and if you're driving and you're listening to do this, don't do this part. (laughs) So now you can't see what's right in front of you, but what can you see? Well, you can move your eyes up, down, to the left, to the right. In fact, find something right where you are that you haven't noticed before. It shouldn't take much, just anything. I've been in this office a long, okay, so I'm assuming that everybody got something. Take your hand down. So for me, it's an unusual shadow that's right above the window, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, I may not be able to see all the details. I can at least acknowledge it's there. That's peripheral vision, right? Now, if I look at that object, it's clearer. It's more focused because I'm staring at it. I'm looking at it. That's peripheral awareness because I'm looking at it. If I look at that obstacle in that mountain field, and this time I move to the right, say hundred yards. Mm-hmm. What does this new vantage point uncover about my obstacle? Well, I get a little more detail, some depth, right? And I can walk all the way around that obstacle and get a 360 degree review. But it's still from my perspective, filtered through my set of experiences. From that position, hundred yards to the right, this time, instead of looking at the obstacle, look around. Now, what can you see? right? Likely you see other objects, maybe different terrain, and there are people, but they're not looking at your challenge. They're not looking at your business. They're not even part of your company or industry. They've got their own challenges, their own objectives. They actually have their own processes, procedures. They have their own ways of overcoming challenges. Their experiences may be just what you need to see your challenge or obstacle or goal from a different perspective using a new reference. Peripheral thinking takes ideas, solutions, other things from the periphery and reassembles them in new ways to overcome my challenge, to reach my goal quicker, to apply that overall skill. Now, the skill we use in the mountain field is called interpreting. Mm -hmm. Interpreting takes different forms of information from different sources interprets them in a way that makes sense, breaks it down into elements, and then assembles different elements from other sources to come up with something new, a different approach. And it's the that's that's that. I have a story for you, but I want to stop there and see if that made sense for you. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. It's so interesting. I was I was kind of having a conversation with my husband this morning and telling him you know, just kind of randomly talking about, I don't know if it's a man thing or what, I don't know, but I was just telling him how interesting it is, how he can approach a challenge versus how I can approach a challenge. And I feel like women tend to be more emotional and where he's more like analytical and more, yeah, well, objective. I told him, like, I feel like you're more objective and, you know, kind of coming back to what you're saying right now, it's just always interesting how a same situation can be viewed with so many different ways. And it seems like from what you're saying, this is all about finding new ways of looking at the challenge so that you can find better solutions, essentially, right? Correct. And and looking at your challenge, understanding that that's absolutely important for you to do. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the best way to overcome that challenge is to not look at it and look around, to turn on that, um, to turn on your interpreting brain, expand your awareness. So I had a client in uh, 2010 in the Midwest, a hospital, and I was working with the patient um, engagement organization there because their client satisfaction or their patient satisfaction scores had dropped and they wanted to regain that. And they were focused on more advertising and some customer satisfaction surveys and the like. But the director calls me on a Sunday evening uh, from vacation. She's in Hawaii. And she says, Paul, I just got this text. I got to read it to you. And she reads it off and it's basically saying, thanks for choosing this this resort. If there's anything I can do to help make your stay exceptional, let me know. And so we talked a little bit about it. And she said, 
why can't I do that with patients in my hospital? Mm. Oh, exactly. There's a solution already proven in another industry that had direct application to her hospital. You fast forward 20 some years, that hospital obviously made um, top and has stayed in the number one position in their region. And that um, that director is now the chief patient experience officer for a 20 wow. hospital healthcare system. That's amazing. And you see this now all the time, right? You see, hey, reminder, you've got a doctor's appointment. If you go into some of these hospitals, it will say, you know, thanks for choosing this hospital. If you have your family here, tell them to text us here and we'll uh, tell them where the the closest hotel or restaurant, where the cafeteria, where the bathroom is on your floor, right? You see that all the time. Right. Yep. Started from- It's amazing. Just one person going. So to find really great um, ideas and solutions, you need to go to Hawaii. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me write that down. Go to right. Hawaii. Perfect. Right, right. Perfect. Yeah. Well, okay. So actually kind of piggybacking off of that, what are some of the processes or things that we can incorporate to get better at peripheral of thinking and, and vision and looking at things in a different way? What are some of the things that our audience or I can incorporate? <laughs> sure. First, it's first it's it's understanding that we all work within parameters that we can consider conventions, right? Conventional. I have a routine in the morning and I don't break that routine. When I break the routine, my day doesn't work properly. So that's a convention. I get that. But there are other parts of your day where you're on autopilot. You're getting your coffee at Starbucks. You're at lunch. You're walking the halls at the office or you take a, a pet on a walk. Those are times where there are still lessons to be learned. And it's okay to tune out. If you need to tune out, your brain needs a rest. But just acknowledging that things are going on and taking a moment, I'm talking 30 seconds a day, and just writing down an experience. What was the experience? Is there a principle, a lesson, something that I can learn from that? Let it percolate and come back to it. How could I use my experience at Starbucks this morning to overcome my logistics challenge uh, with a shipment from China? I'm totally making it up, right? Right, yeah. So I don't know. They do have a really good process of that they follow in getting my drink to me quickly, especially in the drive through area. Hmm, interesting. So I wonder if the drive through if there's a certain amount of timing, I wonder if this logistics issue I have, if I need to do different timing in order to ensure that my things come here. Again, I'm making this up off right, the cuff, right. <laughs> but it's taking the time just 30 seconds, jotting down a few thoughts about what you experienced today that has nothing to do, I'll repeat that, nothing to do with your job, your industry, your profession. It needs to be something completely peripheral. I love and that. And giving that credence and credit as a valid idea. I may not apply it ever, but there it is. Exactly. It's all, and it's there and it's kind of going to sit there in your subconscious until one day it's going to be like, oh, remember back five years right. ago. Okay. So right. I have another question for you. I was okay. reading a little bit about you and I, and I read that you had worked with really big companies like General Electric and mm -hmm. WebMD, United Healthcare, AT&T. What are some of the lessons or maybe one, I don't, you don't have to give me, I mean, I'm sure that there's a lot of lessons, but what are some of the lessons that came from working with these very large companies that could be applied to somebody with a smaller business? Oh, gosh. <laughs> the there are so many. I'm trying to think of, of just one that here's the mantra. Conventional wisdom, industry best practices are the, the roadmap to mediocrity. Mm. And if you stay on that path long enough, you risk becoming irrelevant. Even those large companies, turning those ships is difficult. So as a smaller organization, you are typically more nimble. However, there comes a time when you put in best practices and conventions. I'm not saying those are wrong, 
but they need to be challenged regularly and often. So I guess regularly and often is the same, but you should do it often, really often. <laughs> so I guess that's regularly often. Yeah, no, I right? love that. And, and, and challenge your own conventions because when, when you find new perspectives and you, know, you kind of try them on for size, the insights can compound pretty dramatically, right? The coffee shop, there's a guy at the, that I visit almost every Saturday at Home Depot. His name is Mike and he works in the hardware aisle, you know, nuts and bolts and things. And he's retired. He just works there. So he's got extra money so he can go to Ireland to play or the UK to play golf every year. Mm -hmm. Great. Good for him. But he's also retired IBM, worked in you know corporations. And we just talk. We walk up and down the aisles a little bit so he doesn't get in trouble. We just talk. And I've learned more from him on Saturdays that have nothing to do with my business that I can apply to my business almost every day. Every, every time that we meet. I love so for the I love small that. organizations, absolutely focus in on your clients. You want to focus in and make sure that your brand is standing out, that you are different. And the best way to do that is to not be that industry. It's to be off, it's to be the, the eyes to what is possible. The, the mouth that is telling your clients, here's what's possible. And I know it's possible because it's being used here already, or this idea and this idea together takes my product, my solution, my service further than anyone else because they're not thinking this way. You get into an industry and you and you stay there, right? Even if you serve a lot of people, I'm doing this for many industries, but I'm doing this. That makes sense. You know, and it's so interesting because what I've seen in my own business has been something kind of tied to what you're saying. Um, a couple of years ago, I realized that following convention with what most of the marketers online were doing wasn't working for me. And I call it like pain marketing, where you're doing everything in your message to make people feel like crap, like, oh, you're, you're <laughs> agitating this problem, agitating the symptom and making Both them the feel way. like, you know what I'm talking about? Like I that do. type of marketing where it's all fear-based and just horrible. And about two years ago, I was like, I don't feel like this is what works anymore. That doesn't work for me. That's not the type of people that I want to speak to. That's not the type of people who I want to attract. So I moved from what I call from pain marketing to gain marketing and started focusing more on how, how do I speak more to the visionaries? How do I speak more to the people who are ready to move forward, to, to make an impact, to do great things? And it really changed my business. And what I do today with my clients a lot is how do I help you stand for something different and how do you do things in a different way so i love that that you brought that up because i really feel like in branding and in marketing what you're saying is everything at the end of the day especially 100%. if you want to survive and thrive in the long run more than anything right right, <laughs> right. and 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 thrive in any market condition exactly we know recession we we hear this well i'm old enough to have been through a few of these and it's none of your business how many I've been through. <laughs> a few. Just so two. Just two. I've I've been I've been through. I wasn't there at the Great Depression. I'll put okay. that. Put it awesome. down. Okay, but yeah. I was close. So I've been around long, and I've seen those. The disruption that happens in any industry, whether that's um, uh, it doesn't matter the industry. The disruption often comes from outside the industry. Mm. New players that come in that see gosh, the way that I do business would be perfect in this industry because no one is doing it that way. Exactly. It's fresh, it's new, it's, it's relevant, it's already proven. And they come in and people, wait, wait, hey, they're new players. Oh, don't be excited by just the shiny object. Uh, you know, we've been here for 50 years and we know this industry. Great, are you number one? Have you been number one for 50 years? <laughs> If not, why not? Because after 50 years, I mean, really, you should be number one. You've been doing it for 50 years. Exactly. So why aren't you? Well, I mean, it's a lot of competition. I mean, we are one of the top. Are you number one? I'm sorry. I'm not trying to do the fear base. I'm just saying yes or no. And if you're not, why not? And what, what's keeping you from being that number one? 
what's keeping you from leaving that industry and taking your great ideas to an industry that really needs it? Exactly. I love that. I love it. Okay. So last question that I have for you, and I feel like we've already sort of covered it, but I still want to ask it because I think it's important. So sure. as you've probably discovered in your years of entrepreneurship, there was a lot of challenges and just a lot of mindset work that needs to be done to overcome those challenges, to be able to thrive and keep on going with everything. So I'm just curious to hear a little bit about some of your mindset practices or personal development practices and what role they've played in your own entrepreneurial journey. Well, as, as, a dis, uh, as an undiagnosed dyslexic, mm. I needed to learn how to learn using very unconventional means. So it, it, it's proven scientifically that um, dyslexics have a broader uh, peripheral vision. We, there is, it's broader than the average individual and it's clearer. So using that, I pick up on every cue available. Everyone can do that. You don't have to have 190 degree peripheral vision. It's just whatever right. you have is great. It's picking up on those things. So my the mindset that I first had to work with is that I'm not dumb and that I'm not stupid and that I really can offer some value to my clients and customers and industry and community and so on. So that work continues. You know, you hear the bad words about you whispered in the hallways long enough. Those are all that reel is always going to be playing in my head. So I just remind myself, no, I'm I made this way for a reason. So how am I going to use it for positive today? I'm not going to let that determine um, my value. I know my value. How do I then give it away? How do I share it with other people? That's the first thing. It's just a mindset that comparison is the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to compare myself to anybody else. I want to help. So service is is an um, an awesome motivator. So how can I help other people? Um, other things that I've done just from a, a sort of a business practice is really first things first. There's a lot that goes on. And if I can accomplish one thing today, what's that one thing? Because tomorrow's not, it's not guaranteed. Today isn't even guaranteed. I mean, I make yeah. it, right? And I know that I have fewer years ahead of me than I do behind me. Mm. So I'm on a, on, I am on an absolute mission. I'm up at 4.30 every morning. Um, I, I'm at the office. I'm working by six. Uh, I'm, I'm working till seven or eight o'clock at night. I am on a mission because I have things I want to accomplish and I don't want anything to get in the way. That includes, I have things with my family I want to accomplish. I have community things I want. It's not just about me. Right. There's things I want to give. So what is it that I'm focused on? Where my focus is, that's where my attention, my energy goes. Um, and to say no to other things. And, and the final thing is, what am I struggling with that I haven't asked for help? Hmm. What's something that I'm struggling with today, this week, this month, that I have yet to ask for input, help, uh, pay for a coach to teach me, find someone to do it? What is, what is it that I'm holding on to that I need to let go of? or learn how to handle. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Paul. This has been absolutely amazing. Tell me, where can people find you? Or what do you have? Um, Just promote whatever you need to promote. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You can, of course, find me on LinkedIn, Paul Daniels Jr. Paul Daniels Jr. Um, I'm out of the Dallas, Texas area. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I have a lot of stuff there. Uh, it also points to my uh, personal website, which is peripheralthinkers.com. And on that website, you can connect with me. You can email me and, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I've got a, a YouTube channel that's coming up, a book that launched last July, which did the international bestselling. I was a contributing author. It's not my whole book. Um, contributing author in that book is called Peak Performance Mindset Tools for Entrepreneurs. Amazing. Or you can find that on Amazon. And um, in fact, if if you're interested in the chapter that I wrote, if you will put in this podcast, if you go to my um, my website, 
on the contacts page. Just put in the name of this contact, this website, excuse me, this podcast. Uh I will send you an electronic version of my chapter from Peak Performance Mindset Tools for Entrepreneurs for free. And I don't sell my lists or any of that stuff. Don't worry, I'm I'm not (laughs) anything to sell. But if you want it, I'm happy to do that. And I also have my Peripheral Thinkers uh, monthly newsletter. I love that. Well, thank you so much. (laughs) No, you're good. Thank you so much for being here. It has been absolutely amazing to learn from you. And yeah, wish you all the most amazing things. And the same to you and love the work that you're doing and the impact that you're having on businesses around the world. You Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. My pleasure. Gracias for listening to today's episode of the Break Your Brand Show. To listen to more episodes or to be featured as a guest, go to fabipaulini.com slash podcast for more details. Can I ask you for something? If you got value out of this episode, would you share it on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or just post it online. If you know somebody that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let me know about the show and include the hashtag Breakthrough Brand Show. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We're regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure that you don't miss any episode, go ahead and subscribe right now. Your thumbs up, rating, amor, love, and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean so much to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, fabipaulini.com, or follow me everywhere as Fabi Paulini. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time. Con amor, Fabi.